Uh, in the last lecture, we talked about the assessing heritage and significance values part 1, where we talked about the more about the uh, different types of values and heritage and significance and then uh, what is the difference between the uh, fabric and the intangible aspects. Uh, in this part 2, we will talk more about the uh, intangible aspects of the heritage significance and also we will talk about the management aspects. Um, we, we in that uh, structure when we have in this framework, we talked about that how there can be different cultures and how the assessment of the value integration of that and the statement of significance. This is actually not only uh, involves the physical condition assessment, but it also uh, involves that the management concept context assessment. Uh, if you remember that when we were talking about the Shinto shrine, uh, we talked about that uh, it is not the fabric which is uh, important, it is the continuity of the tradition and the skill because if after 20 years they uh, sort of uh, rebuild it exactly the way in that process they continue the tradition and the skill. And what is also important is the religious practices and the beliefs and the procession uh, which are very important to that. So, we have seen the assessing the conservation of non-material cultural value becomes a very important aspect when we are talking about the assessment of significance and the values. So, these in the case of Shinto shrine, uh, these uh, religious practices, there are many, many practices they play and they uh, drag the uh, chariot with the rope, it almost like uh, our uh, Puri Ratha Jatra when they drag it. So, there are a lot of rituals uh, there over different cultures, there are different ways of doing it. So, these are the non-material cultural value and the question comes that while it is relatively more sort of uh, uh, standardized now how to understand the fabric, but this non-material cultural value and the assessment of the significance is uh, quite challenging. And uh, in this context, let us talk about another world heritage sites which is uh, Ankur in Cambodia. This Ankur in Cambodia, uh, it is a world heritage sites over the years, it has been undergoing restoration work where people from all over the experts from all over the world, they are coming and helping that Archae Indian uh, Archaeological Survey of India has a very great role to play in this conservation over the years. Now, it is a very famous tourist spot. Now, when the tourist comes from all over the world to visit Ankur, Cambodia, um, it has its own demands because uh, to accommodate the tourists, to show the visitors and that is very important. And we must also remember for years it was actually under uh, covered by a forest cover and then later on it was discovered. Now, Apart from the historical and aesthetic value uh, for, to, for which actually the tourists come to see that, we must understand it is also a sacred place for the monks. Now, these, there is thus a sort of a conflict between the historical and aesthetic values versus the living values of these sites which are actually spiritual and the social values. If we do not take that into cognizance, if we do not take in that in those aspects into management of these sites, then it may cause a negative impact for the people who uh, sort of uh, give a lot of importance to the sacred aspect for this um, such sites. We also uh, in this context is very interesting thing because um, over the years people actually knew that there probably was uh, more so other types of uh, larger um, settlement pattern which was there, it is not only the temple, uh, still they have not been discovered, but recently with the present technology of the leader technology, uh, they have been able to find out that it was this temple what we see today, it was a part of a larger system and there were other settlements there, there were uh, there are roads which are possible to could be identified through the leader technology and uh, in 2015 it came to be known and which shows one thing that it was there was a very intricate not only there are multiple cities uh, between 900 uh, AD and 1400 years, but there were also a very elaborate water system there and this water system 
partly still exist, but without there was not value given much to that water system. And this water system was a part of the uh, uh, how Ankar Bhat came. What we see Ankar Bhat today or what the tourists come to see is only a very minimal part of that. So, if you do not understand the system of the water, uh, do not understand that how it was a part of the larger system then or how it is sort of has a sacred value to a community, uh, we will fail to sort of in managing those issue. Uh, that reminds uh, me of a similar study in Konarak, uh, not Konarak, I think it is Khajuraha that where uh, there are temples which are world heritage site and there is an art historian who discovered that there was a water body. Uh, near the Konarak temple and this water body or the tank was very integral part of this temple because uh, the devotees actually used to take bath in that water body and then they used to give worship uh, offer uh, worship to the temple homage to the temple or offerings to the temple. Now, uh, what happened when uh, archaeological survey actually protected in the initial terrace, there was not much understanding of the relationship between this water body and the uh, temple complex. So, what they did is they put a barrier uh, between this uh, temple and the water body, they, though there was a path, that path was blocked because it is not a living temple. But one must understand this water body, the path, it was also an integral part of what why the temple existed, it was a ritual. And so, if you do not understand this type of uh, religious significance or spiritual significance or the value to the community, uh, the, we cannot take care of uh, this type of, we will just see that as a product or aesthetic. Uh, or uh, historical fabric. So, this is very important to understand in a larger context as we are talking about Ankur Cambodia that the this water system that it was a part of a larger city settlement structure is very important to understand. Fortunately, what is happening is that uh, with the different types of technology, modern technology, we are able to understand which are called which is not doing actually much destruction to the site, but we can uh, do that and we can sort of do an interpretation. So, what we have seen in these three examples, so what we have discussed in Ankur Cambodia or Shintu Shine in Japan or Shamuli in Shantiniketan. We found that it is not only the fabric which is important, but the intangible practices, belief, rituals, uh, why they were there, the other types of social values association, the intangible aspects are very important uh, to understand the value and the cultural significant assessment. Also at the same time, we must understand that it is not only that this intangible and the tangible heritage aspects are important and their interrelationship with each other. We must also try to understand the authenticity and integrity constitute aspects of cultural significance that are relevant to assess before and after any intervention since they may be altered by conservation aspects. For example, as I was talking about Shamuli, it will be quite easy to replace the roof mud adobe roof with a concrete structure, it probably people will not understand much, but what it will intervene is that it will intervene with the integrity of the structure. because the value of the structure is the construction technique. Look wise if you just see it look wise and aesthetic probably we will say that it does not matter because look wise it will remain the same, nobody will understand. But if we see Shamuli as an example of the construction technique and adobe structure, then we must give all our attention and the technology and everything to preserve it as an adobe structure. And that is why it is very important that why we must understand the values and significance and how it is related with what is the intervention what is desirable or not. And as I said initially that there are various approaches there is like uh, you cannot sort of say a rule that in this case each and every specimen, each and every structure, every site of heritage significance has its own challenge and it has to be seen in its own context. Uh, we are again coming back to the value based management system, where we are talking about that how the physical condition assessment and the management context assessment are very important to understand that how integration of assessment and how it is important for the policy decision. 
and how the statement of significance is also to come through a group process the community and the stakeholders. I will discuss a very important um, example in Australia that how uh, these um, various stakeholders uh, have a various values and how uh, it related or it uh, gave rise to some of conflict and clash between the different communities and how this was resolved. It took a long, long time to resolve that and how it was resolved uh, by proper understanding of the values and significance. Uh, I'm, uh, but before that we must uh, understand that uh, I am sharing that uh, from one of the lectures by Professor Duncan Marshall, uh, which I attended in UNIT uh, Hiroshima um, course in 2050. Uh, I am acknowledging that he through his lecture actually I came to know about this very, very interesting example. Now, what are the steps for this? First of all, one must understand or identify the values. Then after the values, one must try to identify that what are the attributes that hold, convey or embody the values. So, the value is one thing and we must understand that what are the attributes which actually contribute uh, significantly to the value or represent those values. Then we must in the third step, we must understand that how to manage a property on the basis of these values. So, the management becomes very important. Management means protecting, preserving, intervention or lots of or lot of maintaining it. And then if it sort of give rise to the conflicts and how to manage the conflict between the different values. So, let us talk about this example. So, this is actually Flint's grave Alice Springs in Australia. Uh, so, it is actually uh, has a commemorative value Flint's grave. Uh, there is a stone as we can see is a beautiful surrounding uh, nice uh, thing and uh, it is there and what it was commemorating. Uh, this is located in Australia in this place the Alice Spring and uh, is a large country. So, in a very nice landscape uh, this grave is situated there. Actually, it is a commemorative for a Reverend John Flynn. Now, John Flynn actually is a part of a flying doctor. When the uh, white people came to Australia, they were the original uh, tribal people then who were actually the original settlers, uh, settlers of Australia is a vast country. So, there was not much communication uh, and this uh, group of uh, these doctors, uh, they uh, were taking care of these different types of aboriginal people. And what they did is that they are the different types of tribes as I say in scattered over a vast region. So, what they did is that the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia, it is not a government, it was a, a non-governmental organization. So, what they do is to do is that they used to go to the different regions and they used to uh, sort of find out that uh, about their illness and others serve them if required they will bring back them over the helicopters and the aeroplanes and other things. So, Dr. Flynn actually um, did that service for years to these tribal people. So, when he passed away, the local people and also his team members, they thought that so much he has contributed to the betterment of these people and taking care of these people. So, there has to be uh, some sort of a memorial, uh, not in a city, but in that location. So, what they did to commemorate uh, his contribution, uh, what they did is that they sort of found out a stone from that region and these uh, put that stone as a memorial to Dr. Flynn. While they were doing and taking because there were sort of a natural stones there which are piled up and they did not know or they did not understand that it is actually a sacred site for the aborigines and they put it there. And these aborigines because for them they cannot, uh, they have a different approach towards nature, they do not build temples. For them a site is sacred, uh, man cannot, they believe that a man cannot own a nature. So, that site, the stones, the, the way they are kept 
that is a sacred site and over generations a person or a family sort of takes care of that sacred site, it is a part of their cultural belief. And what it was done is that without understanding this value, uh, one of the stone from the that sec particular sacred site was removed to commemorate or to make that um, commemorate the grave site. And that actually created a lot of uh, resentment with the tribal people. Um, so, when the white people were doing that, they just looked at the stone which looks beautiful, uh, looks more or less which is sort of a roundish shape. They did not understand that it can have a some other sacred value to the people there. So, what are the values in that? One is the commemorative because it was for Reverend John Flynn. One is the historical because it is historical, it is certain events and people it was associated with it. And it is aesthetic because it is located in a particular site, that location is very important, it was shifted from its original site and put up there. So, the site and setting is very important, so it has got an aesthetic value. And also it was an educational value because Australians and visitors who are not aware that such type of things existed and where there was an interaction between the two uh, community where the white doctors they came and they served the aborigines for a long time. So, for future generation this is also has an educational purpose with Australian and visitors will know about such type of things which is to happen there. So, these are the value commemorative, historical, aesthetic and education and also religion because uh, as I said that for uh, aboriginal uh, aboriginals these type of sites are sacred sites. So, they have a spiritual uh, religious belief for these burial sites. So, I am just quoting that one of the people were very upset, one older indigenous woman from the place where the sacred stone had been taken recalls her grandmother crying as she talked about the removal of the stone. Her grandmother had been one of the custodians responsible for looking after it. So, you can imagine that for three generation it has been happened. So, it took a long time because they sort of had a resentment that one of the sacred stein a stone from the sacred site has been shifted to make this commemorative value. So, it happened and it continued. So, now how to solve this? At the same time we cannot sort of uh, can we dismantle that because it was also a uh, 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 sort of commemorating a contribution of a person who contributed to both the communities. So, as I said the indigenous people believe that they belong to the land not that the land belongs to them. So, this is a sort of a value they have and they believe that each part of the landscape the creeks, the mountains, the marking on the rocks has important stories and meanings connected with what is taught to the generations of children as they grow up. So, for them the site and the stone belonging to the site is very important and over generations. So, what was the values, what were the values which was clashing in this particular context. So, if you have to resolve the clash which is happening between two communities, one can just ignore, but you know the resentment will grow up. The, the heritage means posterity and means all types of stakeholders. So, we have to resolve that, we have to understand that what are these conflicting values. So, in this case uh, the it is a very interesting case as I say that it is the what are the values which are clashing. Historical because white Australians commemorative value, so this was historical and the spiritual was for the aborigines because it was a sacred site. So, for them the stone belonging to the site is important and for the uh, white people it was important that it was a commemorative value to a person which everybody loved including the aborigines. So, the removing the rock that the rock was removed from the original site remained a bitter subject between the whites and the Kiatiti from 1953 to 1960. Almost 40, 50 years is over a large period of time, a uh, very long span it actually remained and created more bit uh, sort of a bitter feeling between the two communities. 
So, to solve that the meetings were held in 1980 and 1981 to search for an alternative store. Now, there lies the management. So, for one group the site was important, the stone was important and the way it was commemorating the value. For the other group it was important because uh, the site, the stone was not only important, the stone associated with the site, the sacred site was important because it was a spiritual value. So, one must have to find out that how to come out of this situation because when it was a grave, it was commemorating the value, any, any stone probably would have been okay and a stone which looks like that, but the site is very important the site where it is located, the scenic position, the positioning of the that. For the other group that particular stone is important and the stone belonging to that site is important because it is a sacred site. So, the only possible solution which took years actually uh, to resolve and a lot of meetings that to search for an alternative stone a controversy happened. So, 1996 the negotiation resumed and 1998 a suitable rock was identified because they thought that it is not particular that rock which is important to commemorate that grave. Uh, what is important is stone which almost looks like that and which can be built up. So, what they tried to do is that whereas the for the aborigines the stone with the site is very important that particular stone. So, what they did it the stone came from an area of a vacant crown land. So, they found a replacement of the stone and that stone came from a vacant crown land subject to Alice Spring native title claim. So, now actually uh, because of this experience now all these sites are marked they now have a sort of a proper jurisdiction, proper way that nobody can remove the stone. So, there is a process now which has been laid after understanding the significance in general about the values the aborigines give to the sacred site. So, now they found out the uh, stone which almost resembles to that stone and which also it was uh, verified that it does not have a sacred value to the aborigines. So, there was a certificate which was issued. So, it was removed in accordance with the certificate by the Aboriginal, Aboriginal Areas Protection Authority. Now, uh, and then what happened is the stone was removed and then it was placed and the uh, in uh, which almost looks the same size and place and the that particular stone was sent back to the sacred site. So, this actually shows that until and unless we really understand that what are the values and significant we cannot really understand or resolve the conflict and clashes between the different communities. That reminds me of a similar case uh, in India few years back there was a factory uh, in uh, West Bengal that where uh, they wanted to expand the factory and uh, for that they have to expand in a site where there is a particular stone which the local tribal people have been worshipping for years. And uh, the other people will say ok we will do the compensation the factory people the government said we will do the compensation we will shift the uh, stone to some other site you can do the worship there that never happens because for these tribal people the stone is not important which is a product the stone in that location that site is very important and so rebuilding or removing or shifting is really not the issue cannot solve the issue. So, one if you do not understand the different sort of approaches different ways or different community the how they look at to their heritage or significance we cannot resolve the uh, sort of a conflict which come, but at the same time as we say that now the tendency is that that we must uh, take into uh, sort of everybody's viewpoint all types of stakeholders try to listen to them and so in that case this is a very good example which shows that how the conflicting values and significance if we can analyze them properly aspect wise both the tangible and the because in this case it was intangible one uh, on one aspect and it was tangible the stone was tangible. So, if you want have can understand the inter relationship and the values and significance then only we can find out that what can be done and how to resolve a conflicting situation and that is what we call the management of the heritage sites. Thank you.